morning, everybody. Good to see you. It's been a long day of really great sessions, really great networking, and we're excited that you're here for our developer community panel. So I've been with Niantic for about six months, but I've been working with communities all over the world for about 12 years. Um, I actually moved into tech because I got plugged into an AR community. Um, I saw the power of AR, um, and I decided to go join this huge movement that is AR in the real world metaverse. So for me, community has been very important. I see it every day um, for our developers, how important it is to learn next to somebody, get opportunities from somebody, um, and really connect. And so I'm excited today to bring on some AR professional community developers um, from our network. And so I'm gonna welcome them on stage now. And first we have Dan, who's gonna be joining us. Come on up, Dan. We also have Zuza. And we have the wonderful Pat Cat. All right, let's get started. Yep. So I'd like to have you each introduce yourself to our audience here. And Dan, we can start with you. Great, cool. Hi, everybody. How cool is this? Um, my name is Dan Butchko. I am the founder and CEO of Playcrafting. Community is so, so important to me and us at Playcrafting because we as a company would not be possible without it. Uh, we started way back in 2009 as a meetup group in New York for local independent game developers to connect with one another, play test, and learn. And now we are representing a global network of developers and we found a really, really cool way to uh, basically match those developers that are inside of our community with big brands, big technologies, Lightship, of course, is uh, one of those technologies that we're really excited to be working with right now. Uh, to date, we have generated 19 Lightship uh, awesome. experiences, which is really cool. Um, and you know what? All through this, we've now, uh, between Lightship, Dolby, and a whole bunch of our other folks that we get to work with, we funded over $3 million to independent game developers, uh, solo folks, smaller studios, to get to do what they love and what they do best. So really, really excited to be here. Thank you, Dan. Awesome, Zuza. Uh, yeah, so hi, I'm, I'm Zuza Stivinska, and I'm the co-founder of Lenstis, where for the last, oh, so thanks. <laughs> for the last five years, we've been, you know, creating this database of AR experiences, uh, and actually today we officially launched the real world metaverse category, so I would love for all of you to Show me your best demos, and hopefully we'll put them, put them up on the uh, lens list um, even during the, the event. And you know, throughout this process, we met with thousands of AR developers, uh, so we created this network of uh, really amazing people. So once we get to uh, know them a little bit, we decided to you know, create some content for them and uh, around this community. Uh, share their, their stories through like blog articles, uh, interviews with them, uh, showcase what they do, and then since we were, uh, you know, seeing like hundreds of AR experiences on a weekly basis, we decided to curate the space too with uh, weekly selections or monthly selections. Uh, and now, since uh, I think over a year, we were able to come up with some some monetization opportunities through like contests. Uh, challenges uh, and actually we, we're starting one uh, with Lightship and with Haley on June 1st so you know we're all welcome to, to join and uh, participate. Awesome. Thank you. And last but not least our Lightship leader Pat Cat. Yeah hi everyone uh, my name is Patrick Katanzaridi that is too long for most people to pronounce so I am Pat Cat. And I am one of the Lightship leaders, uh, so I'm helping out Niantic with all sorts of ambassadorship stuff, trying to get people to use Lightship, uh, help everybody from like the ultra beginners who've never touched it before, um, to the more expert people who just want to jump in and do stuff. So I'm around on the Discord and all the various places where you can get in touch, trying to help everybody. And if there's anything that we're seeing developers struggling with, uh, I then have a direct line to go nag Haley. <laughs> and be like, hey, like, we, need, we need help with this thing. Um, so that's what I do, uh, helping out uh, in terms of Lightship. Uh, we've also been doing a lot of work with Lightship in my augmented reality duo called MPAR uh, with my wife, Mary. Um, we team up together to make a lot of experiences, most of which at the moment have been Lightship. So building upon all the work that we're doing with the community and being active ourselves. Awesome, thank you. Nice to meet you. 
Um, and what Pat Cat failed to mention was that he's won almost every single one of our challenges or placed in those <laughs> challenges, mm -hmm. so much so that we asked him to be a judge last time so that <laughs> he couldn't win again. Not win, no. Um, but I, I'm grateful to have you all here today, and it's the first time that we're all getting to really meet in person. We met quickly here in San Francisco once, but it's nice to have this community of community builders um, today as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what is the best way to join an AR community? Um, do you have to have any specific skills or certain values or achievements or, or anything like that? And I'll open that up to the panel. Yeah, sure. So maybe I will start because, you know, we see like newcomers in our community every day. So um, I think most of the people that are new don't really have a lot of skills or have like one specific skill that is a part of the whole AR thing. So maybe they have a background in like 3D modeling, uh, like graphic design or, or coding, but they don't have like the full scope of it. So I would definitely say that you don't need like any specific skill set but you definitely want to have to like have to want to learn a lot because the learning curve is like huge with AR. We constantly learn new things ourselves. It's not like set in stone like in most uh, you know other technical areas. So I'll definitely say that you have to want to learn, ask questions, ask for feedback, show what you're doing, even if it's like on really beginner level, because you know people really are interested in seeing new things, new stuff, uh, so I would definitely say just be open and you know we have for example like one ex example I would give is uh, one of our creators in our community is Balraj Bains. She's like, uh, she was mostly involved in like video production, ph photography and she created first AR experience back in 2019 and uh, you know, over time she started asking more questions, reaching out to us directly. We featured her like over 11 times, I, th I think exactly 11 times in our weekly selections. Uh, then she won our, one of our contests and this month, uh, beginning of this month, she was uh, hosting her first workshop with us. So you know, as you can see, you can start from like one experience and go through like the whole journey, becoming like a mentor to, to the rest of the people. Yeah, and I'd, I'd also say just on the point of being beginner level is that we'd actually would want people who are beginners to be in the AR community. So we don't want just everybody who's in AR to be like, oh, I've been in it for years and I know everything about it because nobody knows everything about it. It's still new and evolving constantly. And if you've got beginners, they come at it with an entirely different perspective. So it's way better if you are completely new, jumping into a community, and then just give your thoughts and ideas. You could actually come up with something that nobody's thought of before, literally just because you're coming at it fresh. So join as a beginner. And it doesn't matter if you've never done it before. Totally. Well, I, I think there are a couple things that I heard from both of you is learning is a big part of the community. Um, and that's a way to leverage your community. So I guess my question next is to build off of that. What other ways can people leverage an AR community once they've joined? Uh, Pat, you start? I can start. Yeah. Uh, the best way that I would say that we've seen a lot of people, especially like early days with Lightship in our Discord, please join the Discord. I hope we'd like to see you all there. <laughs> um, is sharing your stuff and just being involved in discussions. So. Even if you made something really, really simple and small, sharing it means that other people can see what you're up to and take ideas from it as well, and it starts that conversation. So one of the main reasons that I got into AR with my wife, Mary, is that we really wanted to make an impact on technology and where it's going. And if you are just active in communities and sharing what you're doing and why, you're also actively able to question what other people are doing that is consensus and just say, well, hey, maybe that's not the best way to do it. And even if you are a beginner, you can say those things and then get people thinking. And then maybe that one spark that you just questioned turns into like best practice in AR and then say one year from now, everybody does it that way because of that one suggestion you made. So yeah. do all of that, share and yeah. Yeah, basically best practices aren't like here mm -hmm. uh, still for most of this stuff. So definitely sharing uh, what you do, sharing feedback with everybody. And definitely on top of that all, I would say that collaboration is a big thing in AR. So like Pat has a team of his own 
and you know a lot of uh, developers we see and work with like once they start the conversation with somebody they find people who are like you know love their style and everything they can share the skills they each of the uh, each like each of them has because like i said before like there are so many multiple skill sets you need to come up with a full blown air experience so you know definitely find people who are open minded you know who have the, the the skills that you maybe are lacking and collaborate you know use it to to make the best experience you can Awesome. I, I have a follow-up question, actually. Um, so you talked about collaboration, and Pat Cat, you talked about beginners. What about experts, people who maybe have their own studios, have been doing this for years? Um, how do you see them fitting into um, an AR developer community? What is, what is the value they get? What is the value they add? This is a surprise question. <laughs> um, well, I would just say, uh, just from the start, Having experts there actually helps raise the whole community up in some way. So some things, yes, there are no best practices, but there can also be really common things. Like if you run a development studio, then you've already gone through a whole lot of common challenges that nobody else has faced. So even if, maybe there's no best practice, but maybe there's like a really common mistake that everybody makes where they will be ta taking, say, months trying to work out, well, why doesn't this thing work right? And so having experts means that they can just speed up that entire process. Just be there to be like, hey, just do this one thing, problem solved. Move on to the next thing. Then that developer who's just a beginner gets a leapfrog over and actually focus on stuff that matters. Yeah, and I think that what they can like get from the community is that you know when you run your your studio or your company, because like running a studio is another part of uh, what we do, mm -hmm. is you know you have a way of doing things. So you may lack some creativity in the process because you, you know, made 20 of similar effects. So you know how to do it and everything. You, you repeat your process. So you know, involving people from the community, people from outside your company into you know, asking, just asking them questions, showing your maybe some demos and everything, maybe can bring something extra to, to your project. Yeah, and I also, I, you know, when I think about developer communities and communities in general, they're really ecosystems. Mm. And so <clears throat> thinking about a developer community specifically, I like to make sure that there are sort of like every tier of experience level, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can be based on uh, years uh, working on specific AR experiences, number of experiences released, et cetera. But you should really have something in place where folks have, um, mentors, so professionals coming in that are where they want to get to, um, and then also folks that are completely brand new. So there's kind of like this upward mobility track for folks mm -hmm. inside the community, and you don't need to like over, um, you know, like strategize that. That's like a lot of this can be sort of natural inside a community, but you want to make sure that you are creating avenues for communication and collaboration mm -hmm. that sort of transcends those different levels. So there's a pay it forward and also pay it back at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. I like the word ecosystem a lot. And I wonder, as we move towards like the future of AR developer communities, what that ecosystem looks like and what y'all have in mind for the future of AR developer communities. Yeah, uh, I'll take that one too. Sure, yeah. Um, I actually, you know, in working with developers for the last year plus uh, on Lightship and, and building AR experiences, when I see the future of AR communities, I see them existing in AR, <laughs> you know? So imagine overcoming, you know, the location barriers that we currently have, the pandemic barriers we currently have, and finding ways to beam in folks in AR uh, and actually meet up with them. I mentioned before that we got our start on meetup.com. So what would an AR exclusive meetup look like? And I think AR developers are particularly equipped to figure out that challenge, particularly like masochistic and taking on <laughs> hard challenges like that. Um, and so I, that's definitely where I think things will probably go. I love that. I love that idea also for when one day the AR community is all based in headwear versus mm -hmm. phones. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be incredible. How about y'all? Yeah, better go ahead. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I would really like to see just for the future of all of these AR and XR communities is just more collaboration between them. So right now they're very siloed. Um, you'd, you'd have like a Unity meetup group, you'd have like Lightship's Discord, 
you'd have LensList. And so you're already starting to see kind of collaborations, which is amazing, like LensList, joining forces with Lightship. I'd like to see that, but like massive scale, like it just being really commonplace that every meetup is just generally keeping track of things and like, hey, you know, you really need a bit more creative people. Well, there's a creative meetup that you can just kind of go get in touch with and they can kind of help out with something and just, yeah, more intermingling would be good. Yeah, and I think that we'll see in the future, like, if the AR space will more, like, specialize in, you know, specific groups, like, types of experiences or types of skills. But I think also, like Haley said, with new hardware, like, headsets and everything, maybe AR will be so popular, so common, that, you know, the community will be basically, it's already global, but it will be super, super wide, you know, even the users will be a part of the community, not just the developers. So, you know, I think that definitely what we can say for sure, that it will grow. Not sure how and, you know, in which directions, but definitely it will grow, it will grow for sure. Well, you mentioned users too as part of that community, and I wonder, I know we have a lot of people in the audience today who are building their own apps with Lightship or whichever platform or um, even like what we call snackable content here that's a more lightweight experience. Um, what would be your recommendation for growing their community of users? Like what is that, what does user community look like? Um, and I also, real quick, I wanna pause before you answer that and say, you'll have opportunities to ask the, the panel questions too at the end of this. So if you've got questions coming up, we're gonna direct you to the mic over there. Um, but yeah, back to this question. Um, what does it look like to build a user community? How does someone do that? Yeah, so uh, I look at it sort of threefold. The first piece starts on the design level. So when you're building your app, whether it's a game or an experience um, or otherwise, uh, take into account shareability, connection, um, whether the uh, experience is in shade, uh, shared AR, so is it actually a multiplayer experience? Can you uh, build community within the experience? Um, definitely consider that on the outset when you're like in the primordial ooze phase of building your app. Um, second, of course, is feedback, obviously. So integrating feedback all throughout that process. Obviously, you wanna be protective of certain parts of it, um, but there's no way an app is going to be resonant with anyone uh, without getting feedback from the kinds of folks that you want to be playing or engaging with it. And the third would be to treat your users like human beings. Yeah. They're not just um, you know, feedback that you can extract from people. Um, if you do grab feedback and you integrate it directly into the next version of your app, tell your users that that's exactly where that new feature came from or where that update came from. Give them opportunities that are really structured to have sort of a, a, like a, a real impact in the actual development process and hear back from you when their feedback generated something really positive that them and other users can benefit from. I love that. I love the treating them like humans aspect. Um, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of times we can get wrapped up in just like, did it perform? Did we get something back from this person or this person? Um, but really like even having maybe in-person events so that you can like have yeah. that human human to connection. Um, yeah. yeah, it's especially true, I think, in AR because, you know, even though we all probably feel like we're early experts in AR, a lot of people have never played an AR game before, mm -hmm. have never had experienced an AR experience before. So when getting like comments and feedback from folks that are just using your game or experience, there might be like really rudimentary things that are just not under, they're not under, understanding the basics of how AR right. itself works. So you need to kind of handle them with a, a, a velvet glove and really like make sure they're feeling heard um, because if they can figure it out and they can get excited about it, they're gonna be great evangelists for your app. Awesome, I yeah. love that. Anyone else yeah. on the panel? I would definitely uh, like repeat what Dan said with you know, thinking about your audience and community ahead of time, like <laughs> once you're planning, not once you're already releasing your, your app or your experience. Um, and you know, for, for most people like here, like also like Dan said, we, we are all into the AR stuff, so we are excited about the technology itself. But for a lot of people, AR is just like the means to an end, like the, the means to, you know, experience something. Like for example, with Pokemon Go, you know, people just wanted to catch Pokemon, not really, you know, think about the technology around it, I think. So maybe try to, you know, think of, communities that 
maybe already exist and focus about around stuff that you know and you like. So you know, if you if you're into I don't know anime or something, you can definitely then know what peop what people who like stuff like this you know will expect from from an experience involving AR. So think about you know your audience from just like I, I don't know like movie producer or like any other content producer, producer would, would think about it. Um, because the tech uh, aspect of it is definitely super important from your stand of point as a creator of it. But from the user stand of point, it may be just like, you know, a way to experience something that they just want to see the content, you know, play, play the game. Uh, so really, you know, try to think about it from, from the user experience stand of point. Cool. I think you guys pretty much covered it. Yeah, it's, yeah that, that's okay. all it. I'm going to ask one more question, um, but then I'm going to allow people to also be lining up at the mic if you do have a question um, for the panel. So um, I guess what are the challenges that are unique to AR developer communities? Um, and what solutions have you found to work for those challenges? Sure, I'll, I'll grab that one to start. Um, so definitely a few things. Play testing would be a big one. Obviously, just the nature of augmented reality requires you to be out in the real world in, uh, in some capacity. So finding play testers, working with play testers, especially in pandemic land, can be a big challenge. And so my solution would be when you are getting play testers, whether they are friends and family to start, all the way down to just general public, make sure you're you know, in the onboarding process, finding out where they are, what kind of environments they're in, um, so you can really hone in on, you know, getting a nice broad swath of, uh, of feedback based on the locations that they're at, and also if there's any specificity that you need in, in where they're testing out uh, the different stuff that you're working on. The second would be promotional material. So just like I, I said, AR is unique in that we are building things that are melding the virtual and the real world, it can be kind of hard to show that uh, to the rest of the world if they're not actually engaging with it or playing it. So what we found works really well, obviously grab screen captures of the actual game or the experience that you're building, um, but also grab footage of people from a third person view yes. playing and engaging with it. Yeah. Find ways to show that blending of reality. There's, there's one example that I know of, there's a lot of good examples, but if you go to the uh, Niantic.dev uh, video section, uh, there's a, an experience called Metaverse Park yeah. Um, that was built out through the Lightship Global Jam last year, and I thought they just really beautifully showed how that app works without you actually having mm. to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and the third thing I would say is funding. So anytime, anytime there's a new technology, um, finding funding is a very big challenge. Go to the places that are obvious, like Niantic's own fund, see if that's a good fit for you. But also go to some that are maybe not so obvious. Brands are like hugely excited about getting into the AR game, um, and I think that you know, even if you're not super excited about that particular brand, go for it. Have that be the place that you get some early funding for your uh, your company, and then build up so you can build toward actually making the game or experience of your dreams. Yeah, I would definitely say that the challenge is to, you know, on one hand, focus on creating the best, you know, experience, and on the other hand. Uh, trying to monetize it because it's really hard to you know think like with both both brains like the marketer's brain and uh, like the technical brain uh, so, but like like Dan said there there are a lot of opportunities you can um, you know take from like uh, working with brands working with you know us through our challenges like we will try to come up with as as many opportunities for you as we can uh, just because you know everyone was at the starting point uh, one day, so you know we know how it feels when you you know working uh, all day all the time on on your app or on your effect, and then you see that maybe like some users saw it, but you, they don't really maybe know how to, how to use it. So the the beginnings may be frustrating, but I would say you know that's why the community is here to you know support you, give you feedback, make your next thing better and also give you this, these opportunities to monetize. And to work with brands, I would definitely say, 
Also, repeating after them, content is king in this world, so you know you have to really make sure that your promo materials, like all of your videos, are you know super high quality. Like show really what the experience is about. Like if it's educational, really show the effects of how it's you know educating people. If it's like just for fun, just to play the game, you know, just, uh, show the effects of it, like people really having fun with it, you know, not just testing with like grumpy faces or something. So, you know, really uh, come up with content that will show your experience in the best way possible. And I'd say for us, uh, especially what I've seen just in conversations on the Lightship Discord and everywhere else, the biggest problem right now is just words in AR is hard. Because people will say a word and they'll think it means something, and then another company says that that word means something completely different, and then you end up having a whole bunch of back and forth of people who just, they were thinking the same thing, but they call it different and it just goes back and forth. So when you're in all the communities, please just be understanding and just try and explain what you're about and what you're trying to say without assuming that everybody understands the terms you're using. And just be understanding and try and like work through it. Nobody has to kind of agree with your term for things for it to be valid. So yeah, be nice and kind. Patience. <laughs> yes. Patience. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to see if there are any questions from the audience. Um, oh, I see somebody at the microphone here. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you. Hi, uh, my name is Destin. I am the founder of Cardio. It's a gamified fitness app turning any type of outdoor walking, running, or biking into a giant game of Team Turf War where you claim the areas you move through and people can steal them by moving through them after you to make it a fun, addictive, and engaging experience. So there's obviously a lot of community built into that because you have the element of forming and creating teams who you can collaborate with and then teams to compete with. And given we need to develop these atomic networks within cities that we launch and kind of similar to like Slack and Uber and whatnot. Uh, a big question for us has been as we start rolling out um, our beta is how do we go about building a strong network in a city and creating a sustainable one that builds escape velocity so that way it doesn't die in, within itself. So I would love any feedback that you have on that. Yeah. Who starts? <laughs> I'll take it, sure. Yeah, um, I think a really great place to start, especially for your type of app, so a fitness app, is to leverage like communities that already exist there. So whether it is like local sports clubs, um, uh, you know, gyms, chains that are there, uh, there's no need to sort of start from scratch. You can start by um, sort of pulling from and partnering up with these folks that are already uniting around fitness and cardio specifically. Um, and then just kind of like take one, start with the smallest one, can go for bigger and bigger and bigger. And then after you know, you do a couple rounds of that, you're going to have a great set of partners in that city that, are, um, that probably have their own channels for promotion as well. But more importantly, you have a bunch of users that are a really good match for what your experience is particularly about. Yeah, and I would definitely add that you know, make a real case for your app, for your product. So, you know, while pitching to, to your partners, potential partners, definitely focus on like how it will benefit what they're doing already. Uh, and also find not just like companies in the space, but also like real people, like community leaders. Like for example, in my local communities in Warsaw, throughout the pandemic, there, there were a lot of people who, you know, the gyms were closed. so people started, you know, organizing their, their communities, their neighborhoods to, you know, run together or something. So, you know, throughout the, um, uh, this time, a lot of people became this kind of, you know, leaders of, uh, of their communities and especially within like the sports, fitness. So I would definitely try to meet up with, with you know, the right people and then make, the, make a good, good case on how your app will, you know, help them out and help their community. Mm. And I'd also just say, keep the feedback loop open. So always be asking them how it's going, what they're liking, what they're disliking, and actually take that into account, because they'll be more likely to stick around if they feel like it's a back and forth, a rather than just, yeah. here it is, and then you disappear. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, um, loving this community, AR community panel. So I have a question regarding um, 
So uh, Nanantic announced the Nanantic Campfire, AR Campfire thing. So I'm wondering, because to me, AR, the Nanantic Campfire is like Yelp meets Meetup meets Google Maps, right? So I'm wondering, is it possible to leverage something like that or similar software as a community building tool? Because, you know, um, for, for a while, those tools were separated, right? You, you have to go on Yelp, you have to go to Meetup, uh, you have to go to Google Maps, you have to do three separate apps, and it seems like this combines it, plus you might have that feedback loop via going through these events. And I'm wondering if using something like Nanantic Campfire that combines those functionalities might help amplify the community building, the user adoption, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think you're, um, yeah, I'll go on this one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you're exactly on the right track or the track that we're on as well. So um, we spoke to user communities a little while ago and that's exactly what we want to build here. So we've already got a great robust community of Pokemon goers, um, P goers as we say internally. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got our great community of Ingress players as well. And so now they're all gonna have one user name. They're not gonna have to download one app, download another one. And then when we add more experiences to that, there's discoverability as well. Um, and so you're able to discover new experiences, meet new people through an app like that. And you're exactly right. We're trying to just bring it all to one spot and allow the community to come together through their love of AR real world experiences. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at about 30 seconds left as the, the timer <laughs> shows me. Um, any last words from our panel before we uh, break out today? Yeah, for me, just in this first day at the summit, the word pioneer keeps coming up. Mm. And you know, developers of all shapes and sizes working on different kinds of technologies are all pioneers in their own way, but you all as AR developers are specifically a certain kind of pioneer because you are sort of charting new territory on the virtual side, but also on the real world side. And I just think that you all are really building the future and um, none of this would be possible without you. So keep trying, keep breaking stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've broken a lot of things all together in, uh, in the last year or so, and it only makes the technology, it only makes the documentation stronger. So you know, keep on pushing it and you'll be good. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to again invite you to show me uh, all of your apps. So you know, later today or you know, later in the event tomorrow, uh, I just hope you know uh, we'll be able to talk about like the specific uh, use cases, your specific apps, and what you do to you know help you move forward with your projects. And I would love to see you all in the Niantic Lightship Discord, so we can all hang out and talk about AR. Awesome! Yeah, this is a great experience to meet each other, build that community, and take advantage of the experts that we have here on stage. So I want to thank everybody who. Uh, was on the panel today, um, and also our attendees. Come up to us, chat with us. We want to meet you. Um, and don't forget, there's an after hours event right here tonight at 7 o'clock uh, that I planned with a lot of my friends here at Niantic. So would love to see you at that event as well. All right. Take care, y'all. <laughs>